Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. I am getting a bit of a late start today because I stayed up late binge watching Bridgerton on Netflix. <laughs> so, And I never do anything like that. I rarely watch shows on TV. I mostly watch YouTube, honestly. Um, so <laughs> the kids are at my parents for this week. So Jason and I had some you know, free time. And so I thought, hey, I'll watch a show one episode, two episodes, literally the whole series. <laughs> so it was good. It wasn't fantastic, but I did enjoy it. But I am a little, I am a little tired today <laughs> from that. So anyway, today's video, I wanted to take you guys through. I've been actually looking forward to doing a video like this for quite a while. This is going to be a before to now video. So I don't want to say before to after because I don't think my garden is anywhere near at its finish point. I think it's gonna be constantly evolving. And that's one of the things that I love about gardening is that you're never done. You know, once you, once you, ex once, I, once I accepted that fact that I would never be actually done with my garden, it became this fun journey that I could be on and I could enjoy the, you know, the journey and not the destination and focus on the destination, which is often what I do. You know, I always, Jason and I always joke because, um, I'm not a huge fan of going on hikes because I just think, well, what's the point? You're just walking to not, to not get it, to get back where you started in the first place, which is totally, you know, bonkers thinking, but that's how my brain works. So gardening is really, really good for me because it allows me to really focus on the journey. And I was so happy to put this uh, video together with all these pictures because it was, you know, it really made me stop and look at how far I've come in just a little over two years. So Jason and I purchased this home in January of 2020. We moved in actually in March of 2020, but we had the keys in January. We we're just doing some uh, renovations, but I actually started on the garden in January. Um, so they had done some landscaping before we moved in. So it's really funny. I will be working out in my front yard and I have countless people come up to me and tell me how much they appreciate how much work we've done on this garden because this garden used to be very, very neglected, I guess. I guess it had a lot of weeds and um, they're just, you know, there was a lot of turnover for this house. So people in the neighborhood are really happy that we've worked with it. Um, what I do have to say though is I can't take credit for all of it because the person who owned the house before us spent a lot of money on the landscape hardscape um, in the front yard before we moved in. So I wanted to show you guys the photos of what we started with, what I started with when I started working on this garden. All right, so let me get straight into that. I have my computer right in front of me so I can kind of look at and reference the pictures that I'm gonna show you. I'll put them up on the screen. So this first photo is a photo actually from MLS. It's actually from the house listing. And it's so funny, I remember this photo because I remember being in our rental home right before this home and looking at this house and thinking that's the perfect house for my family. I love, love, love that house. But we couldn't afford it at the time. We didn't have enough money. Um, you know, we hadn't saved up enough for a down payment, et cetera, et cetera. So I had kind of put it out of my mind. Six months later, we were still, you know, I still was kind of looking at houses, just looking to see what was available. And I noticed that this house was still on the market. It was still there. So we called our realtor and I said, hey, can you, can you check into this house and see what's going on? And it turned out they were having trouble. They were in contingency contract and they were having trouble, et cetera, et cetera we put in an offer with no contingencies and it was accepted and we had the house within 30 days, which I feel really bad for the people who originally were in contract with this house, but I don't care because it's the perfect house for our family and it was meant to be. I had my eyes on this house for six months. So you can look at this photo and you can see the hardscape that was installed pre-sale a sale of the house. And I have to say the hardscape is fantastic. I am so lucky. I had such good bones to work with. You can see I had the raised garden bed in the front with the swoop and the fence and the uh, the walkway and all the landscape rocks. I have to say, I think I was really, really lucky and my job was so easy to make this garden something beautiful. 
What this garden didn't have is it didn't have very much interest. Those pink flowers in the front swoop, those are tapian verbena, which I really liked that plant. I thought it was a really, really cool plant, but it was ground cover and it would kind of flush in and out of bloom. So there was lots of times where it was just kind of these brown spots of of verbena and really nothing to look at um, and so I knew I wanted more color and I wanted more consistent color especially during the gardening season then there's shrubs a lot of those were lavender shrubs which lavender around here especially Spanish lavender it, it really only lasts three to four years before it starts splitting splitting in the middle and getting really woody unless you're so on top of it with pruning and even if you're so on top of it I've never really seen Spanish lavender look really good and last that long um, so the lavender was even by this time it was kind of done um, you can see on the corner here I'll put an arrow to it. it they still had the breath of heaven and the breath of heaven was so small so it's only been two years and the breath of heaven has like tripled in size so I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do with that breath of heaven shrub that I have um, I've, I've pruned it back a couple times and I think I'm going to do a hard prune this winter um, but yeah so it's you know it's a beautiful house it caught my eye when I was looking at it you know and dreaming of purchasing a home um, but it just it was a little uh, blank for me it was a little sparse obviously you guys can see what my uh, aesthetic is and I like that secret garden like garden filled to the brim aesthetic um, or things are just a, a little too packed in I would say all right so this next video we had some professional we had a we have a professional photographer that takes pictures of us every six months for the girls um, and this was it just happened to be this was um, right after we had purchased our home. Um, this photo, I think it was in March or April of 2020, and you can see just more sparseness. You, um, you can see the Chinese fringe flowers were in bloom at that time and they looked really beautiful, uh, but there just wasn't a lot going on in the home. Um, and it had that big wall in between the two windows um, but on the, on the first, on the north facing facade and I knew I, I wanted to do something there um, you know just just something to fill up that area so it took me a while to decide what I wanted to do this next video is when I really started getting into the gardening excuse me this next picture um, I really really started getting into the gardening of it um, and this was 2021 I would say and you can see I was super into the Supertunia bubblegum I love the Supertunia bubblegum um, and it looked it looked beautiful it looked gorgeous um, and it's I started to get a lot of color I actually really like this photo because there's a lot of color in the background whereas this year I have a lot of color in the foreground and not a lot of color in the background so you know I'm referencing back to this and I can see that I want to work on it um, if you look really closely at, on the back wall you can see in this photo I had already started my espalier my ivy espalier in the background but it hadn't it, it hadn't grown yet but I'll show you guys that in a little bit more detail in a little bit and then this video right here is from my June garden tour, front garden tour. And you can see it's looking gorgeous. It's getting lush and full. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of color in the front swoop and it's beautiful, but I need some more color in the background. So I actually purchased three more of the Supertunia Vista Jazzberries that I'm putting in in the next couple days. So hopefully that'll bring a pop of color to the background, um, but I really think that it's it's really it's really come along. Again, I don't want to say this is an after photo; it's just a now photo um, because I think that you know I can look at this and I can say, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this. Um, it's just where I'm at right now. Okay, and then just moving over to the side a little bit, you can see um, this is just another angle of the front yard and and there was just not much there to start off with. The bones were there, the walkway was there, um, the garden beds were there, even the drip system was there. It's just the, sh the, the plant choices that they picked out just were just basic, you know, uh, plant it and forget it type plant choices. So I definitely wanted something a little bit more. And so again, I started with the Supertunia Vista bubblegum. I'm telling you guys that plant is what got me started with gardening because you put 
one four inch pot and then it looks beautiful and I was so proud of it you know um, that's my daughter Shay and she was so proud of it and they all just loved it they just they we all just thought it was the coolest thing in the world and uh, I just I have to credit that plant with really starting my my obsession <laughs> I would say with gardening I'm not even gonna say love I'm gonna say obsession with gardening so then you can see um, in 2021, this picture is 2021, I added in the lemon coral sedum border along the walkway and it was just starting to fill in and then again putting more color in. Things are still young, things are still growing in and I, you know, I can look at this and I can see what I've taken out and what I've put back in, um, you know, and it's just, it's interesting to see the progress as time goes on. Here's another picture from the same day. Um, and then this is a video I just took this morning. Don't look too close because I've been in Reading for the last couple days, so it's looking a little messy, but you can see how full it is, and I really love it that full. I like the different colors and the different textures, um, and I don't know, I just love it like that. So, um, so yeah, so then and now for that, that part of the garden bed. And this right here is one of my favorite vistas where you can see the walkway um, and you can see the lemon coral sedum leading you up and then you can see that ivy espalier in the back. That is just, it's, it's, it, that's it for me. That's what I want my, my house to look like. Okay, and then this next garden bed that you can see is zooming in right here. It's underneath my crepe myrtle tree. Um, and I call this garden bed, of course, my crepe myrtle garden bed. And this is one of those garden beds. You know, I talked about it in my microclimates in the garden um, uh, video where I talked about the different microclimates that this garden bed has. And you can see on the left side in this video, which is the east side, it gets morning gentle sun. And then the west side, which is the right side in this, in this photo gets the hot afternoon sun. And so it took me a while to try and figure out what plants worked well, but you can see when I started out, there was nothing there. <laughs> there was this old shrubby rose that, oh my goodness, it took me hours to dig that thing out and I'm still getting suckers from the roots that I couldn't get the, deep down in and get it. Um, and I don't wanna spray too much because I don't wanna hurt the crepe myrtle tree. Um, but yeah, you can just see it was basically nothing. So here is 2020 when I started planting a couple things right there on the corner. Those are pink pentas and they did really well and I just thought that they were gorgeous. You can see the crepe myrtle blooms and then it drops all its, uh, its petals. Oh my goodness, just wait, it's gonna be a mess, you guys. It's gonna, I am going to be complaining every day because it's gonna, I'm gonna have pink everywhere. It's almost like it snows pink, totally worth it. Totally worth that tree. Um, a lot of people say they don't like crepe myrtle trees because they're a little messy and they are messy. Um, I don't care, I think it's totally worth it. All right, and then here is when I actually started planting the shrubs, the um, perennials, the, you know, all the flowers that I have in now. And they're little, you know, I started out with them really, really little, and you can see how little these foxtail ferns are. Um, you can see how little these white geraniums were that I got off the clearance rack. Like they started off very small. Um, and then you can even see my lamium, right? That's, I'll put an arrow to it right there. It's very, very small. Um, and you know, in just about a year, it turned into this, you know? There's a view of my crepe myrtle tree. It's th This video was actually taken this morning. I just ran out and took this video. Um, but you can see that things just started to grow in and it was very quick. Um, so I think that seeing videos like this is a, an important reminder to know when you plant things, you're gonna think, oh, that looks terrible. That's not enough, that's not full. Um, but very quickly it will fill in and it'll look absolutely gorgeous. I think this bed looks gorgeous. I love this garden bed. Okay, then I wanted to do a little before and now of the ivy espalier that I have at the front of my house. It's front and center and I love it. Um, it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I do have to go out and I have to, um, maintain the ivy just to make sure it doesn't get out of control but again totally worth it in my mind um, that's just something you guys have to make the decision I think people have to make the decision in their gardens what they want what they're willing to put in it's like if you get a haircut and you get a haircut that takes so much time and so much maintenance but it might be worth it to some people um, some people want a wash and go style and 
I don't know why I'm comparing flowers to <laughs> or gardening to haircuts. That's just what popped into my head. <laughs> so anyway, when, when the house started out, there was nothing there. And then in August of 2020, I installed the espalier. I loved it. Um, and you can see in September of 2020, so just a month later, um, they, you know, things started growing. They got about a foot off the ground. Um, and then it kind of just slowed down a little bit. It took a while. Uh, here's a picture of February of 2021. So over the winter, it basically just stopped growing. It was really, really slow. Um, and you can see underneath, I had the Vinca Minor ground cover all over. Oh my goodness, all over. It was funny when um, it was on a whim that I pulled that out. And um, because I thought that it would just be way too hard to, to pull out. But there were some places that I just kind of rolled up as a carpet because it was put in over mulch. So it basically just pulled the mulch up with it. Now, there's other places that it rooted in and I cannot get that out. Um, but yeah, that's what they had, you know, it was the set it and forget it uh, type of landscaping where you didn't have to bother with that ground cover at all. You didn't have to touch it, but I, I wanted more space to plant, of course. So that's one of the reasons why I took it out. So then you can see this is July. Well, this is today, excuse me. Um, and you can see I took everything out. I'm starting to plant more things in this garden bed. And then I have the ivy espalier and it is filled in to the max. Um, so let's see if I planted it in August of 2020, 2020, it took less than two years to totally fill in. I would say closer to a year and a half, maybe even a year to really fill in and look like something. So you have to be patient. It's the type of thing, you know, I always thank myself when I, when I pre plan what I want my garden bed to look like and don't try and just get that instant gratification. I love instant gratification in the garden, but oh my goodness, when you put some time into it and you give yourself a year or two to really get what you want, it, I think it just pays off. And I love this Ivy Espalier. Okay, so one more spot in the front yard I want to talk about. I could not find a before photo. So here's a before photo of Halloween with my girls. They were Anna and Elsa, and our dog Stanley was Olaf. It was very cute. Um, and so this was 2020. This was October 2020, obviously Halloween of 2020. But you can see behind it, I had more of the same plants that I had in my front yard. I had the purple fountain grass. I had the pink tapian verbena. And then I had three of the Spanish lavender. And these Spanish lavender, those those these were the first to go they looked terrible really bad um, so I knew I wanted to pull this garden bed out I didn't I it took me a while to decide what I wanted to do with this garden bed I could not think of it and I couldn't think of how I wanted it to look or anything like that which is why it led me to the cut flower garden you know the cut flower garden came about just because I could not make a decision on how I wanted to landscape that little garden bed it's a 10 foot by 20 foot garden bed um, you know, so it's, it's not huge, but once I took everything out, I had borrowed a tiller from my neighbor and then I planted all my little baby seedlings that I grew inside. Um, I was so happy that I did that. It was like, yes, this is what this garden bed was meant to be. It was meant to be my cut flower garden. So I think forevermore that will be my cut flower garden. Um, and even this year, I think I want to do a wattle fence or I should say this winter, I want to put in a wattle fence around it. I think that'll look really beautiful. So you can see here's a couple shots of this is this was last year. This was 2021 of the cut flower garden. This was May and then this was June and you can see it was really starting to just kind of blow up. It was so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And then, you know, this year it's looking gorgeous as well. Okay, so moving to my backyard, when we first moved into this home, they had a um, kind of like a raised deck area right where I'm sitting um, and a pergola. And both of them were on their last leg. We ended up replacing them because we were worried about our kids' friends coming over and I don't know, swinging off of it and it falling over on everybody. We were really, really worried about it. It was, it was junk. So, um, so we actually went with, um, uh, Home Depot and Home Depot replaced the pergola for us, which was 
just fantastic. But you can see it was really pretty. This is one of the MLS photos. Um, it looked really good. When we bought the house, they had taken these pots, so I didn't have any of those flowers or anything like that. But you can kind of see the bones of it. This photo with my dog, this is kind of when, um, when I moved in. This was August of 2020. What I had put in and what, you know, I tried to kind of fancy it up with the curtains and stuff like that. I did my best, <laughs> basically. Um, then Jason and I, um, this was 2021, March of 2021. That was when we just decided, no way, we can't, we can't have this anymore. It's, it's a safety, safety issue. Um, so Jason actually took the pergola and the decking down all by himself. I was shocked. He, he was determined to do it and he did it very, very quickly. So I was proud of him for doing that. You can see what a mess it was. And then um, we had the Home Depot guys come in and install the pergola. And then we had some other people come in and install the, um, put in the concrete right here. And we love it. We use it all the time. Um, like I always say, it's an extension of my home. Um, you know, we are out here all the time. And then I also got my greenhouse. And um, so that was a really uh, welcome. It's not so much planting and garden, but it was a really welcome garden makeover, outdoor living space makeover that, um, that I love. And here is a video of what it looked like. This was from the June garden tour. Okay, so the next spot that I'm talking about is this spot right over here. You can see it's looking gorgeous with the limelight hydrangeas, looking beautiful. But here's what it looked like when we for very first moved in. So this is when that professional photographer came. This was March of 2020. There was nothing here. There was rocks and that was it. And the person who lived here before used this area for pool floaty storage, which I just thought was such a bummer because that's the only, that's, that's what you see when you look out the windows and I don't wanna look at pool storage. So I knew I wanted to do something there. Um, Here's another photo, it was just, it was just absolutely nothing. Um, so I ran out very quickly and I purchased the Hall's Japonica Honeysuckle from Lowe's. I think they were in three or five gallon pots and I remember planting them. It was, it was a hot day, <laughs> I remember sweating and then um, having to go straight to work and it was just, what I did for my garden, you know? So um, yeah, so this was April of 2020, so two years later and it's just, it's full and it's lush and it's gorgeous. Here's a video of what it was today or what it is today. You can see um, my uh, hydrangeas are looking gorgeous. I still don't know why this one matures faster than this one. Um, you know, it just must be lighting requirements or something, but it did the same thing last year. This one got, um, so limelight hydrangeas start off as lime green and then they fade to a white color and then eventually a pink color. And this one is always ahead of schedule than the other one. Still beautiful though. And then you can see my topiaries that I, I need to work on trimming and then my pots that I have right there. And I love this area. I think it's beautiful um, and I cannot wait to extend it further into the shade corner, which I think I have some ideas for you guys. My, my, my brain is starting to work on that. It's been such a blank space for me and just like a black hole, I haven't thought of anything. Um, but I, ha I, I actually bought a couple plants to go in there. So I'm excited to kind of get that bed started. All right, so then I'm gonna talk about the three big white pots over on the other side of the pool. This is one of the other uh, MLS photos, the photos that they used to sell the house. You can see that there were three blue pots that they ended up leaving. They had these old diseased roses in that were so overgrown and when the kids would run by or walk by when they were swimming they would get stuck by the thorns i knew i had to take them out um, so i took them i took them out you can see the roots in that um, the, the rose roots, oh my goodness, it was so hard to get out. And then I planted all the pots white, and then you can see that's when my bougainvillea got planted as well. This was, um, let me see what, this was September of 2020. You can see I still had the landscape rock just earlier this year, this, er, this winter, uh, Jason and I took out all the landscape rock and replaced it with mulch. You can't even see because there's plants everywhere, which is what I want, right? Um, but I really like the mulch in the backyard better than the landscape rock just because it's so hot here and we already have so much concrete landscape rocks. Um, it just added to the heat. So I like the mulch better. 
And then you can see this picture a little bit. This is what my veggie garden looked like before anything happened to it. It was just, it was just rocks. There was, there was just nothing there. Um, I take that back. When we first moved in, there was another big rose that was diseased as well. So that was one of the first things I took out. But you can see in the back here, there's the three white pots and there's the bougainvillea for when it got started. All right, and then here's an after photo. This was from the June garden tour. Um, I actually, <laughs> I uh, got, so the Suncredible sunflowers are beautiful and they're just taking over, but they were smashing all my Supertunia Vista uh, pink star, mini pink star, Supertunia mini Vista pink star. Um, so I cut everything back last week. <laughs> I don't even want to show you guys. It's starting to grow back. So that's something that you can definitely do with your annuals. You can give them a mid-season shear back to kind of um, rejuvenate them. Um, and so I just, on a whim, I just cut everything back. So I should show you guys. I'll show you guys a little clip of it right here. Yeah, Jason was like, what did you do? <laughs> but it needed it. All right. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you all is I want to show you my narrow side yard where I have my honeysuckle espalier. Um, it is uh, my, the, it's my side yard and it has my garbage cans and it has my AC unit. Um, so we never go over there. However, the way that my house is laid out, my kitchen window looks right out into that side yard. So it was definitely a place that I wanted to add something into because I look at it every day, multiple times a day as I'm standing at the kitchen sink or, you know, even just walking by through the kitchen, you can look out that window and you can see my narrow side yard. So I knew I wanted to do something there. I had done the ivy espalier on the front of my house and I loved it so much that that I wanted to put it on the side of my house. And so that's why I decided to do that in August of 2020. So again, we moved in in March. Um, so this, this all happened pretty quickly. Um, I installed the wiring and then I had some leftover ivy from the front yard and I, and I planted it in the side yard in an effort to see if it will grow. Of course, it just fried. So the, nor the front of my house faces north. So that ivy espalier is in basically full shade. It gets bright and direct light basically. And the ivy loves it on the, in my narrow side yard, that is the west side of my house. And so it gets hot afternoon sun and it was just too much for the ivy. And so it just fried. And you can see in this photo, I was trying to salvage it. I had put, um, like shade, like these broken pots on it to try and shade it and see if I could get it established and going. And just with the hot landscape rocks there, it was just, it was a losing battle. So I gave up with that. And then I happened to be at Lowe's looking at the clearance rack, which I often am there. And I found, I think seven of these, I think they're five gallon, three or five. I don't, I can never tell the difference between them. I think they're five gallon pots of the Hall's Honeysuckle, which I had already planted here um, for half off. <laughs> so I grabbed them all. I was in my scrubs for work and I grabbed them all and I took this picture to show Jason just to warn him when I came home with all these plants. Uh, but I did tell him that they were 50% off. So, <laughs> so I, had, I took those and then I planted them all in the side yard and it looked gorgeous. It looked so beautiful. And then it's basically just exploded from there and looked absolutely beautiful. And I'll show you guys a picture right now of what it looks like now. So yeah, so that is a before and now view of my garden. Uh, so about two and a half years is what we're talking about. Um, again, it is not an after, you know, it is a just how it is now and things are gonna keep changing and things are gonna keep progressing and I'm probably gonna redo things that I've already done once um, because that's what gardening is. So I think it's really fun to look back and see what your garden looks like, what it looked like two years ago, what it looked like five years ago, however old your garden is. Um, it's funny, I've spent the last couple days in Reading with my parents and they have a brand new garden. And I, you know, I'm so glad that I'm taking videos of their garden so that we can see what it looks like in two years and see the differences. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you have a chance to look back on your before and nows of your garden. Uh, you know, I think you'll be pretty amazed what you can do in just a couple years. And if you have any chance to share them with me, either on Instagram or you can email them to me, I would love to see them. So I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.